Okay, it's 11 o'clock. We're uh, going to go ahead and get started. Um, I want to thank all of you all for uh, joining us today and thank you to all of our partners and our elected officials showing their support for this exciting announcement. Uh, let, me by give, let me start by giving a special thanks to uh, Councilwoman Erica Green, Senator Regina Barrow, Representative Barbara Carpenter, who have steadfastly advocated for this testing site. Thank you all of the hospitals and the clinics who support this initiative, including the Baton Rouge Clinic, Baton Rouge General, Oshner, Our Lady of the Lake, and Women's Hospital. I'd also like to recognize those city parish employees who contributed to standing up this site. And these are also departments that set up our first testing site at the Mid-City location. Our Mayor's Office of Homeland Security, our DPW team, many of them are out here right now, many of them from the Mayor's Office of Homeland Security are here, uh, the Baton Rouge Police Department, uh, the Baton Rouge Fire Department, and our EMS personnel. Thank you all so much, and I want to give uh, specific gratitude to uh, people uh, like Kelly Magaha, who spent a lot of time out here uh, yesterday, Larry with uh, DPW, and so many of our workers, name by name, person by person, thank you, thank you, thank you for everything that you've done to help set this up. Clay Reeves, your staff, everyone. Uh, and finally, I want to thank Governor Edwards and the state's Office of Public Health for supplying us the testing kits that make this site possible. I also want to thank Dr. Don Marcel, who has been working with us hand in hand from Louisiana Health Region 2, which is centered here in East Baton Rouge Parish. Once again, all of these people in all of the respective agencies came together to make this additional testing site possible for our community. You know, it's said that the, in the midst of challenges and anxiety, you should always look for those people who are willing to help. We have seen this in our community, particularly over these past few weeks. In spite of the numerous challenges that have occurred and emerged as a result of the coronavirus pandemic, and in spite of the ensuing physical distancing and stay-at-home orders that have caused a temporary disruption to our routines, we can still find many examples of our citizens demonstrating their goodness and their goodwill and across the country we see shining examples of the best of humanity on display and right here in East Baton Rouge Parish. Today is no exception to that. I'm so proud to announce the actions of our community, these actions that we have taken to create a more inclusive health care landscape in Baton Rouge. As you know, on March 16th, we stood up the, uh, our first community testing site at the Baton Rouge General Mid-City campus. And today, we are proud to announce that in partnership with Our Lady of the Lake Regional Medical Center, we are standing up a second community testing site here at the Our Lady of the Lake North Campus. In addition to this great news, and yes, it is great news, I am so pleased to share that the Dollar General right uh, nearby here, uh, which has numerous stores in our community, are now increasing their healthy food accessibility by selling fresh and nutrition fruits and vegetables in a growing number of their stores. As I said, one example is right here uh, next door. Uh, I think Mr. Aaron Stahl, uh, is with us today, and thank you, Aaron, for working with us. Now, I want to say this. Uh, the fact that Dollar General is certainly contributing to the landscape of healthy foods does not negate the fact that we are still on a mission to close the food gap here in the in disinvested communities, many like North Baton Rouge, and we are on the brink uh, of emerging with a grocery store. So these are examples of how we continue working with private and public partners to address not only the numerous hurdles 
that have developed and materialized in our community as a result of COVID-19, but more importantly, to address the issues that impact the overall quality of life in our parish. Undoubtedly, in the past few weeks, you've heard this slogan, we are all in this together. You've heard it from actors, you've heard it from entertainers, uh, appealing for donations to raise money for charities. You've heard it from government officials as a means of encouraging our citizens to abide by physical distancing and stay-at-home orders. And you've seen it drawn on uh, chalk uh, by children on sidewalks as a way of families showing their appreciation for our critical workers and their solidarity with our community. In times of emergencies in our country, you will see heroism and acts of charity by everyday citizens who want to do what they can do to help. And we are all in this together. And in a time of crisis, this statement does hold very true. But let us look beyond the immediate crisis at hand. Let us all challenge ourselves to be uh, using these words, we are all in this together, long after this virus is under control. I want us to amplify the unity and the gratitude that we feel so strongly right now and avoid any temptation to simply to return to business as usual or the way things were before. Going forward, it is incumbent upon us to lead our community in a new way and to co-create a new normal, given that COVID will remain a reality in our lives for some time. It's important that we as a community challenge ourselves to view the words that we are all in this together as more than a slogan that carries us through this challenging time. When we emerge from this virus, let us adopt this moniker in our communities and in our country as a way to continue demonstrating that our faith demands not just words, but actions to accompany them. As President Barack Obama once said, to put our faith in action is more than individual salvation. It's about collective salvation, that to feed the hungry and clothe the naked and house the homeless is not just a call for isolated charity, but the imperative of a just society. The coronavirus has emphasized gaps that exist in East Baton Rouge Parish and it is pushing us to seriously evaluate disparities in our community and how some of our past and present practices are revealing a story all too common in this country. As of yesterday in East Baton Rouge Parish, 65% of people who have died from COVID-19 are African Americans. While African Americans make up only 47% of the parish's population. The data shows that 61% of people who have died from COVID-19 are males, while males make up only 48% of our population. And 67% of our deaths in our parish are people over the age of 65, while those citizens make up just 14% of our population. Yes, we are all in this together. We're all in this crisis together. You can see we are not at all, uh, we are all experiencing it in different ways. But coronavirus is a story not just about race, but about the disparities of access that exist in our community. The disparity of access to health care and fresh foods, to a quality education and a high paying job. In 2018, my administration, in partnership with our local hospitals, many supporting nonprofits, businesses, schools, and government institutions, released our community health need assessment. Now, this needs assessment includes a joint implementation plan that incorporates shared goals to target the social determinants of health in our city and in our state, which serves as the tipping point for the systemic change. 
the CHNA focuses on a holistic approach to the root causes of health disparities. Issues like poverty, education, housing, access to healthy food, and access to medical care. It's the reason why we have launched the Mayor's Healthy City Initiative and why changing health outcomes for our citizens has not only been a hallmark of my administration, but from my vantage point, it is a moral imperative. But moreover, it's why we work every day to comprehensively address issues across our parish. It's why we advocate tirelessly for emergency room care and greater health care coverage in census tracts of poverty in our community. It's why prioritizing upgrading infrastructure and sidewalks throughout our parish in order to encourage walkability is a necessity. It's why expanding and uplifting access to contracts for small, minority, military, and women-owned businesses is so crucial. It's why overcoming food deserts by advocating for grocery stores in impoverished zip codes is an imperative. It's why we promote and invest more in affordable housing and in transforming communities like Smiley Heights, like the Plank Road Corridor Project. It's why everyone should view investment in every part of our parish as a responsibility for all of us, not just for a select few. These are all contributors to the social determinants of health, and they all collectively lead to better health outcomes and a better quality of life for every citizen in our community. I don't want you to hear this message as a message of the mayor once again pushing an equity agenda or promoting one area of our parish over another. Hear this as the clarion call for all of us, no matter where you live, everyone, to recognize the significance of this event so truly we must be in this together and to co-create a better future for us as a community, as a city, as a parish, long after this virus is under control. These are the challenges of our community. They didn't happen overnight. This virus didn't cause them, and they will not be solved overnight. But we have to unify around them, and we have to arise every day sharply aimed at combating them. We need a new mentality for a new reality. Early last month, at the start of this pandemic, we made decisions to postpone large events and to slow down our economy for a period of time. Yeah, these decisions were painful, but they were necessary. And believe me, a lot of thought and care went into making them. How we re-emerge as a community, the issues we choose to prioritize, and the way we work together to address inequities is even more critical and carries with it long-term and significant implications for the future of this community. In order for us to have a brighter future, let us continue building upon our sound foundation with a renewed vigor and a refocused approach that embraces that a rising tide lifts all boats. Yes, we are indeed truly in this together. And for our community to grow and prosper throughout and well beyond COVID-19, let us build upon the successful work that we've already been doing. Transform it and enhance it in order to co-create and thrive in a changed environment. This is the imperative of a just society, and it is the imperative of our community. You're seeing it today. Look right over there. You're seeing it with the stand up of this community testing site. And I am committed to leading in all areas to continue moving this parish towards a place of peace, prosperity, and progress for everyone. Again, my heart thanks everyone who has been involved in this process. Thank you for heeding the call and for continuously working towards the betterment of this community. 
I look forward to continuing to work with all of our partners, our stakeholders, our elected officials, all who want to move our community forward. Now I'm going to turn it over to Leslie Tilly, who is the Vice President of Operations for Our Lady of the Lake. Leslie. Thank you, Mayor. Good morning. Um, we are here today as um, partners with this Mayor's office, and we are, on behalf of the sisters, I just want to thank the Mayor um, for allowing us to be part of this testing um, site. As you know, our North Campus is an important part of our ministry. It provides the access to care that um, is needed in this part of our city. We provide primary care, urgent care, infusion services, as well as ER services here. And this testing site allows us to continue that ministry. We are proud and honored to work with other healthcare organizations to stand this up. And um, we thank you, Mayor, for allowing us to be part of it. Thank you so much. I see uh, Dr. Don Marcel, who is here. Uh, and Dr. Marcel, I'm going to ask you to come up and say a few words. Just wanted to say thank you, Mayor Broom, for setting up and delay for making this available. Um, it has been demonstrated across the country as well as here in EBR a discrepancy in um, the prevalence of coronavirus related deaths and in an effort to um, better understand um, how and why the city's Healthy Baton Rouge Initiative has links with LDH Office of Public Health to um, better study and understand why exactly there are the discrepancies to see what we can do to um, make this a healthy Baton Rouge for all and um, we are so grateful for this testing site here in North Baton Rouge that will allow an increased access to um, a community that might not have otherwise had it. And we just support um, and appreciate the mayor's effort to um, help mitigate coronavirus here in East Baton Rouge Parish. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I see that uh, Senator Barrow has uh, arrived and I'm going to ask her to make a few comments. Uh, she has been a very strong advocate along with Representative Carpenter for uh, this site which is located in her district. Senator Barrow. Thank you, Mayor. I am really excited about this. I want to thank the Mayor for her leadership. I want to thank Our Lady of the Lake and our many partners who have made this a reality. Certainly, this has been one of the things, one of the issues that uh, myself and uh, Representative Carpenter and many of my colleagues have been talking about as it relates to ensuring we have better access in the northern part of the parish. Uh, we, I would refer to it as a donut home in terms of uh, where we knew where we had uh, places where testing was taking place, but where we also knew that and recognized that we had a gap. And so this is one more tool to help fill that gap. Uh, I'm excited about this. It, it, it only made sense to me uh, to have this facility here and, and to set up this site here. And so um, I expect this, this would be one of many more uh, testing initiatives that we will do uh, in the northern part of the parish to ensure that all of our assistant, all of our constituents rather, have access to care. So again, I, I want to thank you, Mayor, for your leadership. Uh, thank my colleagues that I see in the background uh, for their leadership and their help and our continued voice uh, to this issue, especially in light of the disparities that we are aware of. And again, we'll look into bridge that gap. And I believe this is a part of that bridge. And uh, I see some of the lake uh, officials as well, so I want to thank you, and I'm extremely grateful. God bless you. 
Thank you. I shared earlier, sometimes it's a little challenging uh, for me to recognize everybody now in the advent of having masks on. And I see Representative Edmund Jordan uh, in the back who is, uh, this is his district as well. And uh, I'm going to ask Representative Jordan and uh, Councilwoman Green if they have any uh, comments. And then uh, Representative Carpenter. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the, this data that you mentioned earlier is, is clear indication that we need to take this seriously and we need to take it seriously in our neighborhoods. And so thank you for your leadership. Thank you to the um, elected officials and the, the medical community that stepped up to make this possible in North Baton Rouge. Again, I just want to reiterate some of the uh, sentiments that have already been expressed. I certainly want to thank the mayor for her leadership. She's been working at this tirelessly, so uh, I think she deserves a lot of credit in that regard. Uh, along with the senator, I, I definitely want to say thank you to the lake and, and everybody that they brought forward here. Uh, we've certainly needed this uh, facility in the community when we fought for this a few years ago. And uh, like she said, it is appropriate that the testing site uh, be placed here. But again, you know, if you're reading any of the statistics right now, and I know the mayor has, has said some of this, but I mean, look, we need to ramp up testing, if not twofold, maybe even fivefold. So uh, I think there's going to be a lot of opportunity. This is certainly a step in the right direction, but I certainly just want to reiterate there's a lot of work that still needs to be done, and we need to take this very seriously, again, as everyone else has said. So again, thank you, Mayor. My heart is really full today because this has been something that we've been working on for quite some time. And I am so grateful to the mayor for just embracing our many, many concerns and telephone calls and helping to pull this all together. I really appreciate the partnership that we have with Our Lady of the Lake. If you don't know, this is one of the well-used clinics in East Baton Rouge Parish. And certainly, not having had a testing site in this area between Zachary and uh, downtown uh, Mid-City Baton Rouge was not a good thing. And so it is so good that we now have a site where people who live in the Baker area, in Scotlandville, and even up towards Zachary and Central, if necessary, can come and be tested. Because the statistics have bared themselves out and this virus is to be taken seriously. And if we want to put a stab in it, we've got to do more testing. And so, Mayor, I thank you so much. I thank my colleague, Senator Barrow, and I are on the phone every day, all day, trying to see where we can go next and what we need to do. So this is a good day, a great day, and you will surely see the use of this testing site. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, and now we'll take a few questions. Yes. Okay, now I'm going to have to tell you I didn't hear all of your question. Um, uh, and anybody can help me because I, I really didn't. I just heard stay at home order a little bit. Tell me, tell me that again so I can hear it. So um, her question, of course, is uh, about the extension of the stay-at-home uh, order uh, and a soft reopening. So let me just address that address that. Uh, first of all, um, I want to thank our uh, governor for his uh, leadership uh, in this pandemic. I see one of the uh, leaders of his uh, uh, economic uh, task force, uh, uh, Terry Sterling, who is here, uh, one of the leaders in that. And so uh, I will tell you uh, that next week we will make a decision 
after I am continuing on a daily, or I will say a regular basis, conferring uh, with the governor in terms of what the future looks like after April 30th. Uh, I do believe that you will start seeing a phased in approach of our uh, businesses uh, uh, reopening. And so we will make that uh, announcement next week. I will tell you though, uh, that I have in place my mayor's uh, business round table and uh, we are going to dedicate a great deal of our uh, uh, discussions now and planning around uh, restarting uh, Baton Rouge. And so those existing members of the mayor's uh, round table as well as others uh, who, will be, who will be invited to be a part of that working group uh, will be taking proactive steps to make sure uh, that we are prepared uh, for reopening. All of this against the backdrop of making sure that our citizens are healthy and safe first. And they are not mutually exclusive. They can happen simultaneously. Any other questions? That's a very good uh, uh, question. I will tell you, yes, this testing site was very intentional. And it was intentional when you look at the uh, numbers that I shared uh, with you early on, that now in uh, East Baton Rouge uh, Parish, um, we have, I believe we, I stated earlier, that we have 65% uh, percent of our uh, citizens are African Americans. Uh, and uh, African Americans make up 48% of the entire parish. So I think everyone would probably agree that there has to be intentionality around how we move forward in a COVID-19 culture, absent a vaccine, right? And so uh, in order for us to close those gaps, I think sites that already existed like this uh, clinic here in uh, North Baton Rouge was certainly a natural fit and complement for our expansion. Now there are other voids and gaps that exist around the city and parish, but what we're going to do, as I have had a number of conversations with health care providers, we're going to see how we can creatively close that gap. For, exist, uh, for example, uh, one of the possibilities is the potential of having a mobile unit that drives through areas of uh, disinvestment. But this is what everybody has to understand as we uh, work diligently to close this, this testing gap. Number one, we need tests, right? Uh, number two, you have to have staff to staff these testing sites. Uh, number three, you have to have equipment, PPEs. And so uh, all of that is part of the equation when we talk about setting up uh, sites. I would love to set them up just like this, but you have to plan uh, for these sites. But I am very optimistic uh, with this site that we will be seeing more. And I think it's very important to know that there are other testing sites that exist in our city. Each one of our health care providers has their own testing site for their patient population uh, that is connected to their physicians. But what makes this testing site unique is that uh, you don't have to have money to be tested. Sometimes you have, in some sites you have to have money on the uh, front end. So this means that accessibility uh, is afforded to everyone. Thank you for your question. Yes. Had, say that again. Um, has the parish become concerned about a drop off in tax revenue? And will this affect any planned city parish uh, projects? Yeah. So uh, the other day I put out information uh, regarding our um, our tax uh, revenues, and while we have certainly seen a uh, drop, 
Um, I think it is a, an expected drop considering some of the initiatives that we took to keep our uh, businesses uh, afloat, uh, like delaying the payment of the sales taxes uh, by businesses. Uh, and so I don't think that uh, moving forward, and I'm trying to remember the last part of your question, um, I addressed the sales tax. And moving forward, what was your second part of your question? Oh, will it impact any parish uh, projects? projects? Parish projects. And so uh, our biggest parish project right now is our MOVE EBR project. And that is continuing to move forward. Uh, so that is the uh, most substantial infrastructure project that we, we have and will have for a long time. And we're continuing to move forward with that. Any other questions? Well, thank you all so much for coming out today, and uh, thank you to all of our partners who are here uh, joining us. Uh, we appreciate it, and thank you to all of our hard workers with MOSEP, with DPW, with the healthcare uh, community, all of our hospitals, everyone who has played a role in helping uh, this site become a reality. Thank you so much, and have a great day. And keep your mask on. And stay at home <laughs> until further notice. <laughs>